He's one of the most engaging character actors, or just plain actors, in the business, and it's time to highlight some of his best roles. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 John Goodman performances. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we'll be looking at the most iconic and memorable performances from this big-voiced, larger-than-life thespian. Caution, spoiler alert. Number 10, Dalbert McClintic, Arachnophobia. Would anybody object if I tore this floor out? In this early 90s creature feature, the little town of Kanaima, California, is plagued by an infestation of killer Amazonian spiders. After two people in town are left dead, exterminator Delbert McClintock is called to lend his expertise in eradicating the arachnids. There's no spider here, but I will hunt down the alleged arachnid and spread some to kingdom come. A fun little horror flick all around, it is Goodman's performance that truly stands out. His laissez-faire attitude and smug affection for his work adds an element of comedy in the campy film. Also, he provides the reminder that even if their bite is deadly, when it comes to spiders, the bottom of a boot will always get the job done. Yeah, that's right. I'm bad. Number 9. Big Dan Teague. Oh brother, where art thou? Thank you boys for throwing in that frequency. I'm a man of large appetite. In this interpretation of Homer's The Odyssey, three convicts escape a chain gang and make their way home and to freedom. Like in the epic poem, along the way, they encounter the Cyclops. In this case, Big Dan Teague. I invited y'all out here for this advanced tutorial. Ah! When he believes they're carrying riches, Goodman's Teague invites them out for a picnic lunch in a secluded area, where he attacks them. They later encounter the big man again at a clan rally, where he finally meets his maker. The richness of the performance comes from Goodman's nuanced ability to portray people whose warm, outwardly likable characteristics are just a thin veneer covering their dark, inner selves. <laughs> Number 8. Lawrence Woolsey, Matinee Boom! The first monster movie. That's probably why I still do it. Set against the backdrop of the Cuban Missile Crisis of 1962, the owner of a kitschy cinema finds a way to drum up business for his new Atomic-era creature feature. As everyone is already afraid, Lawrence Woolsey decides to exploit this fear and make the theater experience a more interactive, completely overblown experience. Well, that Woolsey's a genius. The passionate, larger-than-life, cigar-chomping producer character requires an equally theatrical showman to pull it off. And indeed, a great skill of Goodman's is his capacity to play the mischievous mentor, the big guy who's really just a big kid at heart. What's going on? We're gonna have to get a little ahead of the picture here. Make sure the eyes are clear. Number seven, Gail Snotes, Raising Arizona. Well now, H.I. Looks like you've been up to the devil's business. In one of his earliest roles, John Goodman plays Gail Snotes in one of the many Coen Brothers films in which he is featured. Gail and his brother Evel are two convicts recently escaped from prison who turn up on the doorstep of their old cellmate and buddy, Herbert I. Hi, McDonough. Sorry. Where's Junior? What do you mean, didn't you put him in? No, I thought... A wise fool with a better vocabulary than real intellect, Goodman gives the harebrained schemer, and two-bit robber, a real personality with his hilarious, bumbling performance. Hey, not every convict who crawls through a sewage pipe is an Andy Dufresne, we guess. What's that smell? We don't always smell this way, Ms. McDonough. Number six, John Chambers, Argo. Target audience will hate it. Who's the target audience? People with eyes. While the Academy Award-winning film Argo is not entirely historically accurate, notably the role of the Canadian government and embassy in Tehran was minimized to the point of history being rewritten, makeup artist John Chambers was very much a real person and an integral part of the audacious rescue plan. In collaboration with the CIA, Chambers, who had made disguise kits for the government agency in the past, helped put together a fake film to spirit the American diplomats' hostages out of Iran. If you're gonna do a $20 million Star Wars ripoff, you need somebody who's a somebody to put their name on it. Goodman's grounded performance in the face of the daring scheme keeps the whole thing less heist flick and more believable. Sometimes, fact just really is stranger than fiction. It doesn't matter. It's a fake movie. Number five, James P. Sullivan, Monsters, Inc. I don't believe I ordered a wake-up call, Mikey. Well, he's taken on a number of memorable animated voice roles, including that of Paka in The Emperor's New Groove, we just couldn't pass on Sully. He's just so lovable. The fluffy blue monster, top scarer and vigilant protector, needed an imposing speaker to carry the character. And John Goodman, much like Morgan Freeman, has got a voice that is basically a booming warm bath for the heart. Okay, all right. Making nice little area for you to... No, hey, hey, that's my bad! Seriously, and we don't take this lightly. It's a toss-up between these two acting icons for whose dulcet tones would best narrate a bedtime story. Fight it out in the comments. Goodbye, boo. Kitty. 
Kitty has to go. Number four, Howard Stambler, 10 Cloverfield Lane. You can't leave. This won't be the last time on this list that Goodman wrangles a menacing character. Waking up in an underground bunker, Michelle meets Howard Stambler, a man who has a crazy story to tell her. Throughout the film, the unstable and intense Howard's presence is nothing short of terrifying. A so-called protector who is perhaps an even bigger danger than anything that might lurk beyond the confines of the bunker. This is my private space. Off limits, unless I give express permission. The fact that John Goodman gives off an endearing vibe in real life is what makes his villainous roles, which he is just so darn good at, so captivating and chilling. This man has got serious versatility. After I saved you and kept you safe, this is how you repay me. Number three, Charlie Meadows, Barton Fink. My name's Charlie Meadows. I guess we're neighbors. In yet another Coen Brothers film, we have John Goodman playing a character who is not all who he seems. The titular character meets Charlie Meadows after his move to Hollywood to write film scripts. While he seems like a generally okay guy at first, in a patented Coen Brothers twist, by the end, the audience discovers that he's not exactly who he says he is. Joel and Ethan Cohen actually wrote this twisted character with Goodman specifically in mind, knowing that his friendly demeanor would lull audiences into a false sense of security. Well, I guess that's a tragedy right there. Number two, Dan Connor, Roseanne. Would you care to make a small wager? Oh, name it! Despite having already launched a film career, back in the late 80s, Goodman accepted the role of Dan Connor, the everyman father of the blue collar sitcom Roseanne. While by the end of the nearly decade-long original run of the smash hit he had reduced his screen time to focus on other projects, for many years he personified the hard-working, down-to-earth family man. We can't put it off till the weekend? No, Dan, it's tonight. <laughs> but honey, it's Tuesday. Oh, that's right, Dan, I forgot. Restaurants don't serve married couples on Tuesday night. <laughs> Goodman's easygoing nature was perfectly in sync with the character who, while not the central star of the show, was just so relatable. The show wouldn't have been at all the same without him in the role. Let's just shake some of that wise guy out of you. <laughs> hey, Mr. Connor. Hey, Chip, how's it going? Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Well, now you're going to feel my power as it surges downward from me, straight through you, from nostril to rectum, now until the end of time. He said, holy Jesus, what is that thing? Uh, it's, uh, it's my cat. Well, it's not my cat. Grown it's man a... with a cat. Is that part of your act? What's the deal, buddy? You look like you're hurt for certain. Number one, Walter Sobchak. The Big Lebowski. Over the line! In an iconic film filled with iconic roles, once again from the Coen brothers, there's perhaps no one quite like Walter Sobchak. Walter is one of cinema's best characters, and is one of those roles that just would have been wrong if cast with anyone else. Smoky, my friend. You're entering a world of pain. The passive-aggressive bowling fanatic, Vietnam vet, and utter lunatic has some of the best lines in the film, and Goodman's delivery is flawless. You see what happens? This is what happens when you f a stranger in the ass, Larry. This unstable best friend of the dude, and this slacker noir, is endlessly quotable. And even those unfortunate souls who have not seen the zany miracle that is the Big Lebowski are likely to be familiar with this character. Without a hostage, there is no ransom. That's what ransom is. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo and subscribe for new videos every day.